Free things you do, which blocks your angel and blessings. Hello everyone, welcome to Toonflix channel. A massive thanks, for your constant love and support to the growth of this channel. May the good Lord continue to shine his light upon you and give you peace. In Jesus name, Amen. As a Christian, the belief in divine assistance is often deeply rooted, with the understanding that every believer is accompanied by an angel tasked with ensuring their well-being. However, the relationship between your actions, attitudes, and the effectiveness of your guardian angels is of a great importance. Kindly watch this video till the end, as I'll be showing three factors that can potentially hinder your angels and block the flow of blessings in your life. By understanding and addressing these obstacles, you can open doors and pave the way for your angel to work towards getting your blessings. Oh, Sarah, you are here. Yes mom, I am watching a TV program. I just got off the phone with your sister. Is everything okay with Betty? Of course. As a matter of fact, she broke to me, a very exciting and wonderful news. Please what's the news? She just told me about her engagement. You mean, James proposed to her? Yes, my dear, I am so happy for her. It's remaining you now. Why are you moody? Ain't you supposed to be happy for your younger sister? Mom, it's not that I am not happy for her. Just look at my life. I am not heading anywhere good. My daughter, you shouldn't be saying this and you know it. No, Mom, how do you think I should feel? It seems like my life has nothing to write about. Sarah, stop saying nonsense. I can't, but feel helpless about my life. You are not in my shoes mom. That's is why you won't understand how I feel right now. It is obvious, I am the only single one remaining within my circle of friends. Mom, I feel like God has forgotten about me. My daughter, I will advise you to go on your knees and talk to God. Please let's end this conversation, because it is not making any good production. I need to go to bed. And you also need to go into your room, talk to God in prayer. And stop this lamentations you are doing now. <laughs> Sarah, 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 your life will remain frustrated. I will plant doubt in your spirit mind. You will keep push away, your angel. I will make sure you don't align with your angel to receive your blessings. <laughs> Gabriel. Yes, my lord. This week, is a week of blessing. So many, among my children will partake of these blessings. But it has to be according to their supplications. I am deploying you all to convey this blessings to various individuals, accordingly. And you have been assigned to Sarah. Follow her closely, monitor her prayers and convey the blessing, in accordance to her request and supplications. Thank you Lord, for this assignment. I shall do according to your instructions. May your name be praised. Lord, what and how else will I ask, or tell you my predicaments? Why is my life like this? Why do I feel like I'm stuck while everyone else is moving forward? My younger sister is about to get married, and here I am, not even having a single suitor. What am I doing wrong? I've tried to live a good, moral life, following your teachings, but it seems like it's not enough. Why haven't you blessed me with a partner? Even those whom I am better than, are doing better than I am. My life is a total mess. I can't even boast of anything good. I go to church, I pay my offering and my tithes, I partake in church activities. Why haven't you opened doors for me? I've been working so hard, but I'm still struggling to make ends meet. No good job. I am angry with you Lord. I need answers. I need to understand why my life feels so stagnant while others around me are flourishing. 
Number 1. Complaining, instead of praying. It's easy to succumb to the habit of complaining rather than seeking support through prayer. However, this shift can be harmful, as it obstructs the flow of blessings into our lives. God, who listens to prayers and supplications, is not attuned to complaints. When we choose to lament instead of turning to prayer, we accidentally build a barrier between ourselves and the angel that should have brought our blessings. It's in the moments of prayerful reflection that we find clarity, guidance, and the strength to navigate life's challenges. Matthew 7, 7-8, says, Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And this passage didn't say you should complain, rather, it says ask. Therefore, let's refrain from the habit of complaining and instead embrace the transformative power of prayer. Sarah, it's been too long. You know since I got married, I have not had the time to come back to this town. But we came for a program yesterday. I said I must see you. So tell me, how have you been? Oh, Amelia, you wouldn't believe the mess my life has become. It's just one disappointment after another. I'm sorry to hear that, Sarah. But you know, life has its ups and downs. Things will get better, I promise. Amelia, you won't understand. I have not tangible job, I have no money, and look at me. I am going towards 40 years now. No husband. And you know how I always wanted to get married before I clock 30. But see me now going to 40 years. Amelia, I have come to the conclusion that nothing will ever work for me again. Not even marriage. No man would look my way anymore. That's not true at all, Sarah. You're a wonderful person, and there's someone out there who will appreciate you for who you are. Please, don't even bother yourself, trying to sweet talk me into believing anything good can come out of my life anymore. Look at your life. You are married with a child already. You have a good job and a comfortable life. So you can't understand how I feel about life. Sarah, I understand it's been tough. But you can't give up hope. Your time will come when you least expect it. I wish I could believe that, Amelia, but it's hard when life keeps knocking me down. But, looking at every circumstances surrounding me, I have come to a conclusion that it is my destiny to remain struggling, with nothing to show. God has abandoned me already. He has failed his promises, over my life. No Sarah, I rebuke that devil speaking through you. You shouldn't be confessing negative words with your mouth, no matter what you may be going through. <laughs> Sarah, your angel will lose sight of you. You will keep confessing evil and making negative utterances. Your blessing is far from you. Number 2. Negative utterances, and evil confession. When we consistently vocalize pessimistic beliefs about ourselves and our circumstances, we create a cloud of negativity that obscures our vision and blocks the flow of positive energy into our lives. These negative declarations reinforce a mindset of lack, unworthiness, and defeat, which can repel the angel, and very blessings we desire. Instead of attracting opportunities and abundance, we unintentionally push them away with our words and thoughts. Our negative confessions become self-fulfilling prophecies, shaping our reality in accordance with our bleak expectations. Let's look at James 3.10. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. This passage highlights the inconsistency of speaking both blessings and curses from the same mouth. It reminds us to be mindful of the words we speak and to choose words that edify and encourage rather than tear down. Additionally, in Ephesians 4.29, it says, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. This verse instructs us to speak words that build others up and bring grace to those who hear them. Negative confessions and utterances do not align with this principle. I guess, Amelia will never understand me, because she is not in my shoes. No one will understand me at all. 
I am very certain God has abandoned me. I must make a move. I must take another means to solve my problems. I guess my destiny is in my own hands now. I think I should go meet the spiritualist. What, what brought you to my chamber? Life has failed me. Nothing is working in my life at all. Woman, your destiny is tied by someone. You will need to perform some rituals in order to set you free from this bondage. Great one, what must I do? Gabriel, are you done with your assistant? My lord, Sarah has soiled her hands. She has made it very difficult for me to convey her blessing. She didn't grant me access to bless her. It is not your fault, Gabriel. You will be assigned to someone else. The mission to bless my children continues. Thank you, my lord. Number 3. Engagement in I-D-O-L-A-T-O-R-Y. The involvement of anything other than God can hinder our spiritual growth and blessings. When we prioritize material possessions, status, or even relationships above our connection with the divine, we lose sight of the true source of fulfillment and guidance. This can lead to spiritual emptiness, moral decay, and a sense of disconnection from God. Additionally, idolatry can blind us to the opportunities and blessings that God has prepared for us, as our focus becomes consumed by worldly desires rather than divine purpose. The Bible reminds us in 1 Corinthians 10 14. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. Also in Colossians 3, 5, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires and greed, which is idolatry. Ultimately, breaking free from idolatry allows us to experience the fullness of God's love, guidance, and blessings in our lives. Let us all be guided and allow access to our angels in order to get all the blessings God has prepared for us. Thank you for watching. I invite you to support this channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Like this video and share it with your friends and family. Together, we can reach even more people and continue to spread positivity and inspiration. God bless you.